Recalling our roots to grow anew, you've heard that a lot today. It's the theme of this year's convention, and indeed this theme will continue into the coming year. Recalling our roots to grow anew. I thought and prayed about this as I visited every congregation, all 48, yes, including Maryville, in my first few months here with you in the Diocese of West Missouri. The convention planning team, which started planning for this convention back in January, came up with the theme for this convention. Indeed, the planning team has been a great group of people from throughout this diocese to work with on this convention. And I am grateful for their work and for their deep love and care for this diocese. I keep on thinking about this theme and the words of Bishop Tuttle, which I have shared often with you. Yours is a glorious missionary field, talk missions, work missions, love missions from the very start. All around the horizon, there is missionary work for you and that too of a most promising kind. Kansas City, St. Joseph, Springfield, Sedalia, Carthage. Ye that are strong, I beg you uphold the weak. I beseech you as for your life, stand by the missionary work. Here and now, you are to give tone to your diocese. You are to start the making of its future history. Be prudent, prayerful, earnest, kindly, unselfish, generous. I thought often about Bishop Tuttle's words as I traveled around the diocese. I heard especially early on when I would visit a congregation during the week. Bishop, why are you here? Are you here to close us? No, I'm not here to close any church because if we close any more churches in this diocese, we lose the Episcopal footprint in that area. That would be a shame as our voices as Episcopalians are a much needed balm in the Western part of the state of Missouri. I learned many things in my diocesan travels. I learned that there are many silos here that had been erected in this diocese, silos that limited communication and stifled creative, collaborative mission and ministry. I learned that there is distrust, not only between congregations and the bishop, but between the clergy and the bishop and the clergy and each other. I learned that there has been a lack of direct communication around issues and with people. And I learned that the diocese is too often reactive as opposed to being proactive. None of these issues are new, but they are issues which need to be addressed so that the diocese will be able to start a search process to discern and elect the best person to be your next bishop for this gem of a diocese, and it is a gem of a diocese. Some other areas that I discovered and turned my attention to were as follows. Doing away with ordinations at convention and confirmations at deanery services. That was the first to go. Inviting diocesan council to move to use the consent agenda, which frees the council to have more robust conversations around issues that matter. We also moved to meeting monthly, which provides more time to be proactive in the work coming before the council. This also has meant that as there is time to discuss issues, items becoming coming before council, which may have been previously rubber stamped in the past, are no longer treated that way. One good example was council going line by line by line through the budget, asking for more narrative and questioning openly what is in there. This was our first step and a process to overhaul the budget, which Mr. Kokier already spoke about and I'll speak about a bit too. 
We also hired Chaz Marks as our quarter time transition missioner. We changed the focus there to start working with a congregation the moment the rector or priest in charge announces that they are leaving. This is helping to speed up the transition process so that congregations don't have long lapses between clergy leadership. You will see in the budget that you've already looked at that we've asked for Father Chaz to be moved up to half time on diocesan payroll to help me with congregational development. So much of the work of transitions overlaps with congregational development. A subset of the work on transitions was the establishment of the diocesan leave taking policy, which is a standard policy used across many dioceses in the Episcopal Church and in other denominations as well. This gives the clergy person who is leaving and the congregation a clear roadmap of duties and expectations and helps with the emotions around a clergy leaving and ensures when it is followed, a smooth entry for the clergy person coming into that position. This was a natural outcome of revising how we work on transitions in the diocese. Father Charles Everson joined the staff as quarter time missioner for vocations. Again, we are trying to streamline the process of vocations and increase communication among candidates and seminarians and the diocese. We continue to work in this area as we move people already in the pipeline forward while moving to standardize the ordination process so that it is easy to understand all requirements and dates and expectations are clear and published well in advance. Just as planning for convention started much earlier for this convention than in years past, we are moving to do the same with the budgeting process. Indeed, in December, we will be outlining a process by which we will strip the budget down to zero and rebuild it based on the revised mission and vision statements that you all were working on just a few minutes ago. At the same time, subgroups will be formed to study compensation for clergy and laity, as well as assessment calculations, Information will be brought to the people of the diocese through the New Spirit and the From the Mission Field Monthly so that you are all informed about this important work well in advance. And you already heard about some of the times that we came together to celebrate, learn, and pray. Absalom Jones, deanery picnics, and no, I did not go down the water slides. <laughs> Diocesan prayer vigil against gun violence, diversity workshops, diocesan council and standing committee retreat, joint staff retreats between the diocesan staff and the cathedral staff, leadership essentials, renewal of vows, stewardship workshop, and the women's retreat. And we started revitalized or continued committees of the diocese, and I'm going to repeat what what our treasurer said, because I think it's important for you to all know. The Campus Ministry Committee, the Differently Abled Committee, which has now been known as Access for All God's Children, the Formation Committee, the LGBTQ Plus Committee, Peace and Justice Committee, Property Committee, Stewardship Committee, the, union, the start of our chapter of the Union of Black Episcopalians, and I think I'm proudest most um, and grateful to uh, the Reverend Rita Kentigore for getting that off the ground for this diocese. So, <laughs> the Worship and Liturgy Committee, which of course put on all of these great liturgies for us for this, this weekend, then the Youth Committee, who is working to hire a new uh, youth person for this diocese. And they have been self propelled and have been going great guns. The issue there is that there's not a lot of candidates that are poking their heads up, but we're still digging. So please hold the youth committee in your prayers. The diocesan staff, leaders of the diocese and I, have spent much of our time together 
trying to move ourselves into looking at the diocese as a whole, looking at it holistically. This is to break down the silos which have existed here. I need to tell you that this is not always easy work. We will continue to work on open communication, transparency, and making all our work as proactive as possible. My goal with all of you is to rebuild trust, restore effective, healthy communication styles, put guidelines in place where needed for our common life together, and to visit all of you as often as I can, and to be available to you as your Bishop Provisional and to share with you the love of God in Christ. That is my goal. I know many of you follow me on Facebook, where you see every day where I am, what I'm doing, and what I'm praying for. This has been my daily habit for years. This is nothing new. I also love taking photos of all of you, the beautiful churches here, and posting them as well. And those of you who follow me very closely know I have a love-hate relationship with Wordle. <laughs> and that my beach balls at home at Irvine are a source of delight and sometimes frustration for me. This is all to say, while I have been working very hard and very fast this year to put you all on the right track to be able to elect your next bishop, I am also taking the needed time to relax and spend time with my family. And I have to share with you, and I mean this, I have been so charmed, so charmed by, vi by visiting you all in every congregation and what I have encountered traveling through West Missouri. I would like to share with you my travel highlights. The first time I saw a share the road sign with an Amish buggy on it. I was so thrilled, I nearly crashed the car. I was even more thrilled when I actually saw my first Amish buggy on the highway. I wasn't thr so thrilled to get behind one of them though. My encounter with the outhouse at St. Oswald's in the fields has been my favorite story to share with family and friends and many of you. I won't tell it now, <laughs> but let me say, I didn't. I ended up not having to use that outhouse as I saw a little creature go that way. Anyway, I've stopped there. Okay. I can't help but smile every time I think about it. And the genuine warm hospitality of the people of the Diocese of West Missouri has been a balm for my own soul as I gather with all of you and I spend time away from my own family. A truth I love to tell, driving in West Missouri is the best driving experience I have ever had. When I hear, oh Bishop, Kansas City roughs our traffic, it's horrible. I have to laugh. When I go home to Irvine and I get on the freeway there, I really miss driving here. I love Kansas City barbecue. Unfortunately, according to my oncologist, it has had a negative impact on my latest cholesterol numbers. And I love experiencing the different food offerings this part of the country has. Everything from Springfield style cashew chicken to barbecue in many barbecue restaurants. You just heard about my cholesterol. And I'm still waiting to taste the pork tenderloin sandwich up near St. Joseph. Speaking of food, I'm sorry to really tell you, I am not a fan of deviled eggs. I know, I know. However, whenever my husband is with me on a visitation, he is always very grateful for them. And I have to say, I am still leery of driving at dusk or dawn when the deer are, well, active. All this is to say, 
that I have so enjoyed these last 11 months with all of you, and I'm so grateful that the Spirit brought us all together. You know, the roots that were planted here so long ago are still here, longing to be nurtured. We're getting there, but this will take time. I think you can see that we have made great progress in one year. Let us continue to come together, work together in the months of to strengthen this diocese, focused on the words of Bishop Tuttle, so that we may recall our roots to grow anew. I ask you to be prudent, prayerful, earnest, kindly, unselfish, and generous. And let me add, patient. Thank you.